So today we're just going to do a video on uh, the different types of snowshoes, um, from the more modern type to some of the more traditional types, pros and cons of each, and maybe give you a little video of what it's like walking on snow with each type of snowshoe. Okay, so these are just a fairly cheap department store modern type of uh, aluminum snowshoe with a plastic binding, crampons here, um, so you get a little traction with your step, and then on the back where your heel is, there's another crampon which just gives you some extra grip. So probably this general type of snow should be a little better on ice, um, but certainly not as big and not as much flotation on uh, powder snow. So the mistake a lot of people make is they'll have their toe too far forward and they'll hit the front of the snowshoe or they'll have it too far back. So you just want to have it you know, somewhere a little bit ahead of where the snowshoe pivots. And this certainly would be one of the cheaper types of uh, new age bindings. So with these snowshoes, this is just typical snow, a little bit of crust and powder on top. You definitely can see that you sink a fair amount but not terrible to get through. This is just a baseline walk to give you an idea what the snow would be like just with normal winter boot on. Um, so I'm roughly down to my knees, a little farther in certain places. Now that would be lots of work if you had to do that all day. So next up is a pair of, I think these are called the Huron style or probably the more uh, traditional old style that a lot of people are familiar with, with a somewhat modern binding with a ratchet strap but nylon cord on the back. So we'll try these out and see how they perform. This binding system I bought uh, from a company called Faber out of Quebec and uh, it's been working pretty well. It uses roughly the same ratchet strap mechanism but a little more robust and then just a nylon strap with a click buckle on the back. So it goes on pretty good. Um, and in the bottom of these snowshoes, you don't have any uh, metal cramp on. You do have lots of webbing that gets you some grip. Much bigger surface area for flotation on the snow, but probably not as good for icy conditions or icy snow. Go try these out. So, same snow conditions, and uh, you can see that I'm, you know, going down a couple inches maybe. I know I'm walking a little bit on where I walked before, but here's completely fresh snow, hardly sinking. So, definitely in terms of flotation, uh, big fan of these type of snowshoes. In a subsequent video, maybe we'll do showing them on ice, but or, or harder snow. But anyway, great flotation on soft snow today. So now I've got uh, another type of <coughs> older snowshoe. These are, I think they're called the torpedo style. So quite tall. I'm a little shy of six feet tall, five ten or something. You know, or however tall that would be. Uh, long and narrow, less maneuverable, but lots of flotation. And these have. This is a new binding, also from Faber, but bit of an older style so it's pretty much all leather with some nylon strap and just normal boot laces. What I like about this is if that broke I always have extra laces, I have extra webbing, um, I carry extra buckles so and if the leather broke you could always put a new hole in. So really easy to fix out in the woods um, and really easy to fix uh, uh, if you, you know I guess if you had something go wrong. So we'll try these out. A little harder to put on but still work really well. leather strap here that goes over top of your <coughs> midfoot. So I'll show you how that works. So you just open them up, slide your foot in a little ways, and then tighten it down over top of your toe, making sure your foot's not too far forward but also not too far back. I go roughly halfway into this uh, square open area that all snowshoes have. And then this leather strap sits over the middle of your foot. If you wanted extra security, you probably could 
tie a knot there just to keep that from loosening up. So that's one, exactly the same. Tighten the nylon strap around your heel. And you put that on your heel, you don't want it up too high and you don't want it down too low. Some boots will even have a little um, lip here to prevent this from going down too far, but these ones don't. So, okay, so the uh, other feature of these, because they're so long, it's, it can be kind of hard to turn them, as you can see. So you, you have to almost turn them like skis, where you take small steps and uh, pivoting around where your heel was. And if you look at the snow imprint there, you can see how I turned with that. Uh, definitely a lot harder to turn these in deep snow, but these are the torpedo snowshoes, long and narrow. Flotation, I'd say, is just as good as the uh, Huron, I think what they're called, Huron type I tried earlier. I like these a lot. They're narrow, which would be nice for going into thicker woods. Um, the only problem with these would be the turning radius being quite a bit bigger. But I've been using these all winter and uh, like them quite a bit. Another problem potentially with these is if you're crossing a log or something where you might have to gap the snowshoe, which is where there's a span where, uh, and the, the snowshoe is only contacting at the front and the back. That could be a risk for damaging these snowshoes. This is a small example of what it would be like to gap something. I don't think there is a clear answer as to what is the best, but I think I can give you a good idea about who would benefit from which type the most. And I think in general, if you're gonna buy one pair of snowshoes, you're probably going to be deciding between something like this, a modern aluminum snowshoe with crampons, or a more traditional style of snowshoe like this one. So if you're someone who just wants a pair of snowshoes, you don't need to do any maintenance on, it doesn't matter what the weather is, it doesn't matter if it's raining or wet or powder, um, and you don't wanna have to worry about breaking uh, the uh, snowshoe, then I would go with this, uh, the traditional style, or sorry, the modern style, um, because of all of those reasons. Um, if you're someone who wants a more natural product with some historical value to it um, and is okay with the little bit of maintenance that comes with these as well as probably a little more um, of a learning curve to learn how to use a snowshoe and turn the snowshoe um, and a little bit better flotation but is okay with sacrificing the ability to use them on icier conditions then I would go with this type of snowshoe. For me overall, I would say in New Brunswick, 90 plus percent of the time I'm out snowshoeing now, I'm using the traditional kind. 